Good job. Okay, so let's go through, well, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's go through the project requirements, um, collateral and photograph it. You did that. Uh, photograph your 3D giveaway. You did that. Um, collateral document. You did that. Uh, yeah, you should have your bleeds crop marks. Yes, yes, you did that. You did that all. Um, and then include all these components in your PDF name. So you want to include, that's, oh, that's the one thing I wanted to mention. You want to include this in here somewhere, okay, um, for your final presentation next week. You don't have to do it this week, but I just want to, I want to describe some things to you that are really, really going to help you with the presentation itself. Okay, so all is present and accounted for. So let's take a look at the presentation. Okay, the, oh, by the way, you have to credit that image. At the end, I didn't see it credited. And while I'm on that topic, um, before, well, I won't forget, but I'm, you know how I am with, you, let's get these formatted in, in APA formatting or MLA, it doesn't matter to me, whichever. And you can go to, um, um, let me see, the name of it is, is, is Purdue Owl. Um, it's like Purdue University and OWL, O-W-L. If you just Google that, it'll take you to a wonderful um, a resource for, for formatting your APA and MLA um, citation. So, so please, please don't forget to do that because right now that's, you're missing a really good opportunity here to, to wrap this thing up in a really professional way. So the opening page, I would not recommend starting the opening page with a contract. I would put this back in the end in like the, like an appendix type thing. Maybe even, well, not, at, you don't have to do after your sources. You can do it before your sources, but I, I, I would do that. But if that's a great touch, uh, um, adding that in there. Now, what I would do with this is, is um, boy, You've done so much work. I mean, technically, this should be on a help letterhead, which I don't think you want to use a photograph on a letterhead. But um, that, that's okay. That's okay. You have, you have a contract in here. That's fine. My um, uh, comment, let me see. Let's go to contract, estimated cost, payment schedule, reproduction. All right, this is a problem right here because you're saying that the client has full reproduction rights. Then you're saying all reproduction rights are held by the designer. Okay, so it's one or the other, but not both. I recommend, well, it, boy, it depends. Uh, you know, in a project like this, realistically, I would, give, um, I would give full reproduction rights for the logo, and I would retain other reproduction rights, um, like for the brochure and stuff like that, uh, or the, the card and the other stuff that you've designed, because otherwise you could find it out there being used, um, and you really don't have much you can do about it. Um, even the company that you, you design it for can turn around and repurpose it if you don't retain the rights to it, or at least some of the rights. So again, um, you, you, and then this, all this is saying is this last one, all that's saying is that the designer retains personal rights to use the project for purpose of design competitions in your portfolio and things like that. Okay, so one of the two, but not both, um, unless you simplify us. Uh, whatever that word is, um, uh, um, that this is um, 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 for the logo. You make your stipulations. Yes, yeah, so unless you make your stipulations that that is the logo. Um, the client has full reproduction rights um, for a completed project, for the completed logo, and then um, you decide, but that's how I would do it. Okay, so the contract looks great. Now, design-wise, I would not use the same... Um, I would not use the same typeface for your 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 headlines as I as you use for the logo. Don't don't do that. That's just cheapening the logo. You don't want to do that. You want that to appear exclusive. So, you know, you, you don't want to just go and jump in and use the same fonts. It kind of yeah, you know what I mean. I hope. Anyways, if you don't, then let me know and I'll explain it further. But basically, what I'm saying is that you want your 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 logo to be exclusive. You want folks to think you designed that instead of using a typeface. Do you see what I'm saying? So. Right over here, you're kind of reinforced. And I get it. I mean, I get, we don't have time to design that by hand. There's just, I, I, I get that completely. But we can certainly make it appear so by not reinforcing the fact that, yes, that is indeed a font. Okay. Um, otherwise, I think uh, you have some alignment issues. Um, uh, where were those? Okay. So here's your, so the end of your, your, 
like I said, the contracts are probably going to back, but you know, project summary um, and then your mission. That's great. These are great, wonderful. Logo Insider, I don't know what that means, and I think that's going to cause some confusions. I would not call it Logo Insider. I would just call it Logo. Um, and, and that way, the, 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 it, you know it's a description of the logo. Logo Insider sounds like some kind of – I just I, – I don't want you to lose anybody in by adding words or, or that, that just don't really describe anything other than, than – uh, uh, what could be used as just as logo. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, great job. Good job. You got to have those. Good job getting your colors in there. Um, this was good. I, I Well, first of all, I thought this was great. Good good job there. That's just wonderful. Now you can use it. I mean, you use the, the other one as a background, a backdrop to 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 use to uh, draw your, your illustrator. That's great. I'm all for it. Good job. Over here, you have... Um, uh, watch your alignment there. That seems to be out of alignment. Okay, everything is left aligned. Then that's out of alignment. Okay, and then you have your collateral insider. There's that insider thing again. I'm not, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, again, I, I think you're going to lose people. They're going to they're go collateral insider. What's, what is an insider? What does that mean? Just leave it as collateral. Materials, great. I love your materials. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I want to use this as an example is because you've just, just done such a great job describing the materials and how this all turns into to sustainability, including the life cycle analysis, which is great. Okay, so watch. let's watch our alignment here. Um, help cards life cycle. But over here you have materials. You don't have help card materials. You don't have help card collateral insider. But so over here, just say life cycle. You don't have to say help cards life cycle. Let's keep it consistent. Okay, this is where the alignment thing comes in. Okay, you've got this this nice left margin that you've been using your whole presentation. Then all of a sudden you just completely shatter it here by pulling this to the left side of the left margin and then indenting the rest of your paragraph. I, I, I would not do that. I would just give it a typical subhead. Um, you know, I use the same typeface you have been using, you know, whenever you decide to change that. And then, um, I, you know, if you want to use a bold, I, I would, or a semi-bold, or even an italic here, but I would not use the colors. It's just, it's too distracting. Plus, you, you, you know, when you put the yellow in there, you can't read it. Um... So, um, okay, so giveaway insider. I love this bag. This bag's awesome. Good job. Good shot on that bag. Anyway, you can get a couple more shots on that. Um, you know, all you got to do is, is shoot the bag uh, from a couple different angles. And then I don't know how you did this, but you can, you can Photoshop that logo right on there. Um, use a displacement map. You can get a close-up. That way you get that, the um, uh, texture of the bag, you know, the weave of the bag. You can see it, like, you can see it through the logo. So that's called the displacement map. If you want to take a look at that, I don't know if you have time to do that. We're coming down to the wire here. So um, anyways, just phenomenal. Uh, and then, um, yes, your sources. And then let's, I just want to do this really quick. Let's go jump over here to um, week six so you can see uh, just real quick. So this is all everything that's due. So there is quite a bit to do here. And I gave you a little final checklist here. Um, so just, you know, between this, um, that, and this checklist, I think you should be just fine. But there's, it's asking for a couple other things. But, um, and then just real quick while I'm here, I know I'm going on 10 minutes here. I'm so sorry about that. But I just want to do this real quick. I'm just going to Google Purdue Owl. See, and it comes right up. Here's Purdue Owl University. And here's your um, research and citation. Here's your APA and your MLA style. So... You can really see how it's done. Mm, overview in a workshop, APA formatting style guide. So this is wonderful. Okay, um, and that's all I have. So if you have any questions, please just give me a holler. Great job. Thank you.